Say you're in math class and your professor asks you to inquire about a mathematical phenomenon. You have no idea where to get started, so you go on a nature walk. As you walk along, you notice the trees have some sort of pattern to their structure. You begin to wonder if there is any mathematical way to describe these patterns. Suddenly, you have an idea about your inquiry project. You begin to wonder if there is such a thing about a perfect tree that follows a recursive formula. As you research, you come upon these things called fractals. But what exactly are they? Right away, we noticed that there were two distinct styles of fractals, ones that we identified as geometric and tree fractals. For our inquiry, we defined geometric fractals as a series of connected segments or geometric figures that have patterns that recur at smaller scales. For example, we focused on the Sierpinski triangle, a geometric fractal that follows a specific pattern of inserting an inverted triangle within every upright triangle, and repeating this process through each generation. We described the fractals in a mathematical language. With the geometric fractals, we counted the total number of shapes that we had at the end of each repetition or round. With the Sierpinski triangle as an example, this meant the original triangle equaled 1. And after the triangles are drawn inside of it, there would be 4, the inner triangle with the four, three outer ones, followed by the next round of triangles, which would equal 13. We saw this was following a recursive formula of 3a plus 1, a being the previous number of triangles. Jordan with her trees was counting the number of branches at the end of each round of drawing. So the trunk would equal 1, drawing two branches off that trunk would equal 3, the two branches plus the one trunk. Two branches off of those two branches would equal 7, next 15. Our formula for this fractal tree was 2a plus 1, with a being the previous number of total branches. We did this process of turning many geometric shapes into recursive formulas by counting shapes, and we turned many trees into recursive formulas by counting lines. By noticing that both the geometric and tree fractals follow recursive formulas, we began to look for connections between these two styles. Was it possible that a geometric fractal could share a recursive formula with a tree fractal? Was it possible that we could translate a geometric fractal into a tree fractal? With this in mind, we got our hands dirty with examples. We soon discovered that many geometric fractals shared recursive formulas with tree fractals, such as the Sierpinski triangle and the square fractal here. However, many fractals, such as the Koch snowflake, were not able to be translated because no recursive formula was found. So, our initial idea of translating fractals didn't work out. But wait, when we translated the square fractal, each shape became a line on the corresponding tree fractal. That's like going from the second dimension to the first. With this in mind, we explored some more. Though we know that tree fractals share a recursive formula with geometric fractals, we can add on to our original definition of a fractal. The initial condition for tree fractals is excused if the patterns remain constant through the rest of the fractal. From this, we formed a conjecture. For every geometric two-dimensional fractal, we can make a tree fractal in one dimension from the recursive formula from the total number of shapes in each step. Once we have a tree fractal, we can count each line per step to put on a number line as a point, i.e. point in the zeroth dimension. Let's use the Sierpinski triangle as an example for moving from the second dimension all the way to the zeroth. I use the Sierpinski triangle since it is a commonly known geometric fractal. As we previously mentioned, the recursive formula is 3a plus 1, a being the number of shapes in the previous step. Here we see the four steps in the process of creating the Sierpinski triangle. The steps are shown above each shape, and the numbers of the shapes are shown below. The first triangle is one shape, the second has four shapes, the third is 13 shapes, and the fourth is 40, and so on. Now we can move into the first dimension. Underneath is the four steps in the process of creating the matching tree fractal. The steps are shown above each tree, and the number of lines are below each tree. The first tree is one line, the second is four, the third is 13, and the fourth is 40, and so on. This can now be translated into the zeroth dimension, points on the number line. You can see that the first triangle's attributes matches with that of the first trees and so on. Why is this interesting? What well, tells us that each respective triangle form creates the respective tree form? Looking at the shaded parts of the Sierpinski triangle will tell us the new active endpoints or leaves on a tree fractal. So using our new hypothesis on the Koch snowflake, we can see that it is in the first dimension and is not in the second dimension as it appears. Instead, if you look at each edge at its own fractal, it is easy to visualize what we mean. The one line turns into four lines, then 16 lines, then 64 lines. You then multiply each round by three for the three sides on the original triangle. You get the recursive formula of 4a. This is then turned into the dots on the number line. 
in general, the initial geometric fractal must fall into two categories, either two-dimensional or one-dimensional. Once this distinction has been made, careful analysis of the fractal must be made to determine what the repeating pattern is. This will give us an idea of what to pay attention to when we attempt to find a recursive formula, and will avoid the previous problem we encountered when we tackled the Koch snowflake. The next step is the, is the most important, which is taking it on one dimension based on the dimension it currently exists. This will either produce a tree fractal or a number line, though each can be interpreted and redrawn in different ways depending upon the mathematician. For example, one may choose to represent the number line as a tree graph, where each endpoint on a leaf represents the number of lines in the previous fractal. This is another way we explored fractal dimensions, which also seemed to work. However, for the purpose of this video, we decided to stick with number lines for the zero-width dimension. Finally, we attempted to make a geometric link between the fractal dimensions, such as common length of segments or a similar appearance, yet no considerable similarities were found. Due to this, we believe our fractals operate based solely on the recursive formulas they produce. So in conclusion, for every example we have done this going from higher dimensions to lower dimensions through recursive formulas has worked. We were only able to lightly dabble in the third dimension, but our hypothesis remained true for that dimension too. This is something that could definitely be explored further. Finally, this is quite a long ways from that stroll through nature.